Hello and happy Friday. How are you guys doing? I'm wondering how many people are going to catch this live. Let me get these pop-ups out of here. I'm going to be doing that for a while. Um, for those of you who are new, welcome. I'm super excited that you're here. And for those of you who've been in this community for a long time, my gratitude is deep for all of you. And I'm so glad that you're here. So, oh, and I'm Nancy from Nancy's Health and Wellness and Mindset Life Coaching. I am a certified life coach in the areas of health and wellness and mindset. So for those of you who don't know, that's who I am. I'm here for you. This wellness site is pro bono. I like to speak like a lawyer sometimes. <laughs> Not really. Um, but it's free to you. It's free to you. It's free to your friends. Um, I'm Typically, I do a live video once a week. Today is the day for that. And I am doing some upcoming classes in October, which I will post. And I will post the dates, the times, etc. So, welcome. Super glad you're here. Um, directly behind me are real flowers. And I like to get myself flowers every now and then. Um, I get flowers from others too sometimes, which is nice. Um, but I have these beauties behind me if you can see them. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about self-care. And I wanted to talk about a few different topics as well. Um, so earlier in the week, you may have seen my um let me get this microphone adjusted here a little bit uh earlier in the week you may have seen me out and about on the lake that was lake rossiger in snohomish washington i was out there with my best friend chris shout out to chris won't say her last name because i don't want to say her last name on on my on my podcast or my live videos um but her name is Chris, and she's been my best friend for 31 years. I have another best friend, Shelly, and I won't say her last name either. Um, but those two girls are just gems. They are complete saints. Um, I don't know what I would do without them. And that leads me to one of my topics today, which is our friendships, our relationships. You know, a friendship is much like your family, um, much like your uh, the people that you are sort of partnered up with, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, whatever the case is. And what what a common sort of a common, I would say, denominator or a common theme in relationships is you have to put work into it. Now, I know sometimes relationships are effortless and they're easy and they're, you know, but you, you still have to put in the work. You have to put in the work for the relationships. It's much like a garden. If you don't tend to your garden and you don't, you know, cultivate it and, and take the time and the energy to care for it and tend to it, what happens to your garden? It dies. And that's how relationships kind of work too. It's like your garden. And, you know, it doesn't matter if it's your friendships, your family, your, you know, intimate partners, whoever it is, there's still going to be some amount of work that you have to put into it. And I think that this, the smallest gestures mean the most to you know, people that we love and care about. And I think it's important to say how much you appreciate people and to show them that as well. Um, I think it goes a long way to have, you know, integrity and loyalty and honesty in a relationship, be it friends, family, whatnot. I'm going across the board for the relationships, talking about, you know, the care that we have to put into those relationships and we want to really surround ourselves with you know people that 
you know, share common interests with us. Um, you know, just kind of human nature. We like to have people around us that are sort of like-minded. And that is true. Um, I like to have people around me that are much smarter than me who can offer a different perspective on something that maybe I didn't think about. And I think that's how we ultimately really grow. And so speaking of friendships, I have two, well, I actually have a few friends that are over 70. And I've said this in videos before, the wisdom that I can gain from them is just, there's no price on that. It's, it's absolutely astounding. The, the, so you could just soak it up like a sponge with your friends that are older than you. It's, it's great because they've, you know, they've lived it. They have the experience and you can gain a lot. You can gain a lot from friends who maybe you thought you'd never be friends with. Someone who you thought, no way, I, I don't have nothing in common with them. Those are sometimes the best friends. The people that are like really opposite from you and really offer so much to your life and you you offer them a lot in return so i wanted to mention that today about the friendships and our you know relationships and how we need to cultivate them and really put the work into them um i think a lot of times in relationships uh the mindset is sort of it gets a little bit like complacent and that tends to sort of deteriorate the relationship so this is where the work comes in. Another thing I wanted to talk about with you guys today um, was developing habits to reach your goals. Do you sit down and sort of, you know, ask yourself, what's my goal? What do, what do I want to do? What, what is it that I want to accomplish? Maybe in the next month, maybe in the next year, maybe your five-year plan. There's got to be some type of plan. When you look at the most sort of uh, successful people, and success is measured in many different ways. And the way that I'm sort of saying this on success is people who have reached a huge, you know, achievement in their life. When you look at those people, they didn't just get there effortlessly. They worked really hard. And this is what you have to be very motivated you have to be very, you have to sort of encourage yourself when other people aren't there to encourage you. You've got to believe in yourself. And sorry, these pop-ups are just never ending here. Um, but you've got to believe in yourself and sort of believe that there's something like a higher purpose for yourself. And really apply yourself and to reach your actual you know, goal, you've got to really motivate yourself. And I know I've said that a few times that you've got to motivate yourself, but really the only person in this world that you can really depend on 100% guarantee, and there are no guarantees in life, but what you can guarantee is that you will always be there for you. And even in times that you haven't been there for yourself and you haven't been doing your best, you just pick yourself up, you reevaluate your situation, and you move forward. If I were to write a book about my life, um, it, I don't think a lot of people would, they'd be blown away. They'd be blown away. Um, I had um, a boss one time tell me that, you know, other people haven't had it as easy as I have. And I looked at her and I said, how would you know what kind of life I've had? You know, people judge the book by the cover. And um, I'll tell you what, honestly, uh, I've had some times in my life that, I mean, I've had people say, I can't believe that you made it through that. I can't believe that you, you know, you're, you're one strong, tough cookie. And it's not really a label I wanted to be a strong individual or a strong woman. Um, it's sort of just the path that I chose. And, you know, people say, well, I'm on the wrong path and I, I don't think I'm doing the right thing. Um, 
I'm here to tell you, you're never on the wrong path. You might just be managing it poorly. And that's when you look at things, reevaluate them, and then move forward. And if you're really doing a good job in your life and you're really, you know, you're really feeling successful and you're feeling accomplished, um, pat yourself on the back. Give yourself credit. Look at yourself and go, look, look what I did. Look, look what I'm doing. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of us who don't really look at our own lives and give ourselves credit for um, what we've accomplished and what we've gone through. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so that's another thing to think of is, you know, look, look where you've been in your life and look how far you've come. And, you know, all of us make mistakes. All of us fall down. This is how we learn. You know, mistakes and failures are just speed bumps on the way to success. And we all have different measurements of success. And I don't think that it's really fair to compare our lives to anyone else. I don't think that that's even relevant. You have to just look at your life and look at what you've been doing. And, you know, this is not a narcissistic thing to do. This is not selfish either. Part of self-care is recognizing, you know, your your own potential, your boundaries, um, exerting your boundaries with people. You know, boundaries don't mean anything unless you execute them, unless you implement them in your life. And, um, you know, I don't. I don't really have a problem setting boundaries with people. I, I don't think I've ever had a problem setting boundaries with people. Um, I think that it's very crucial to your life and your well-being to take care of yourself. And I think that, you know, on our daily list, um, especially women, and this is nothing against men, but women are, women hold the majority of the responsibilities you know they do it all they you know they work full time they take care of kids um they you know take care of their relationships their friendships their you know they are doing a million things women are by far the biggest and best multitaskers out there it's just inherently part of being a female and with that said, you know, we all have things that we put on our list and things that we do. You know, I have a daily to-do list. Do you put yourself on that list? Do you put yourself on your daily list of things to do, of things to take care of? Like, uh, for instance, you know, something for myself is I will incorporate exercise into, you know, my day whether it's just a walk or it's go to the gym, whatever, um, it's definitely something that is for myself. I don't work out for other people. I don't, you know, I don't do the nutritional sort of wellness for myself, the diet that I have, and I don't mean diet by being on a diet. I mean the nutrition that I put in my body. I don't do that for anyone else but myself. I'm taking care of myself because in this world in this life you like i said you're 100 percent guarantee of the person who's going to be there for you and take care of you is you so part of that part of that belief system in yourself is really looking at all your potential and all of you know just um all of the gifts that you have to give to others and you do Every one of us has a gift. Every one of us has a purpose. Every one of us has, you know, an ability to bring these gifts and these, you know, your purpose to life. And so it's really important to sort of, you know, take care of yourself. So that's another thing I wanted to talk about today. And another thing I really want to talk about in I'm going to get this sort of short. One second. Are you drinking your water? 
Hello. Oh, can you see it? Big, big, big water bottle. Um, <clears throat> so don't forget to drink your water. Drinking water, staying hydrated. You know, like I said before, sometimes when, you know, we are, uh, you know, when we think we're hungry, we're actually thirsty. So um, this is something that you really want to, you know, manage. You want to ma manage the water intake that you have. And it's, it's different for everybody. I myself drink about a gallon of water a day. I know that sounds excessive, but it's just, that's just what I do. I absolutely enjoy water. I love cold water. Um, I can absolutely drink water all day long. Um, of course, I don't drink out of the tap. I filter it. Um, not everybody does. Some people don't care. I have um, an aversion to tap water. I don't like the taste of it. Depending on what state you're in as well, the tap water is not very good. Nevada is one of them. They don't have very good tap water, I have to say. So anyway, I wanted to bring that up about, you know, hydrating yourself. And then also for those of you who are interested in intermittent fasting and learning about it and um, maybe having some questions answered, things of that nature. I will be having a class that will be including intermittent fasting. And there's a lot of information. I know it's really confusing and that's why I do these videos. I try to sort of debunk a lot of the confusion if I can. And um, it definitely, there's a lot of different experts out there on the intermittent fasting one that you could actually look up that he is a medical doctor he's out of uh, Canada his name is Dr. Jason Fung I love him he is uh, brilliant and I feel like he has pioneered the intermittent fasting um, the world of intermittent fasting I mean, he's just so knowledgeable um, there's not much I don't agree on with him. I pretty much am on the same page as he is on everything. Jason Fung has written three books, um, The Diabetic Code, The Obesity Code, and The Cancer Code. And I have all three of those books. In addition to intermittent fasting, I know a lot of people do the ketogenic diet. I don't think there's anything wrong with ketogenic diet, but I don't think that it's a sustainable diet. Um, type of diet. I think that um, my concern would be on cholesterol, um, maybe a little bit too much protein. Um, you know, nobody is really um, protein deficient in this country. Um, I'd say they're more fiber deficient, which leads me to this book, which I showed you on my last video Ooh, go this way fiber fueled by there he is dr wool will sorry bolsowitz md um this book is really good and i have another one sorry i have to grab this here and i've mentioned this guy too i love him he's my he's my new favorite australian aussie man and i love him he is brilliant. I love his intellect. I love what he has to offer. And this book is awesome. The proof is in the plants. Let me get my, there we go. Simon Hill. Simon Hill. Oh, hold on. Here we go. Simon Hill. The proof is in the plants. I need to go this way. All right. And there's a forward in there by Dr. B. Dr. Bolsowitz. Love him. So yes, of course I have that and I also have the cookbook for fiber fueled and um, I have been eating more plant-based uh, I did keto a couple years ago um, and then I did it a few months ago for about four months and um, which is funny because you know you eat so much meat etc um, you got to watch that because meat is not good for our kidneys which Dr. Jason Fung would agree since he is a nephrologist, so he's a kidney specialist, and um, 
it's just there's so much to our bodies. We're just like a walking science experiment. So I've been experimenting with myself. Um, I got into a pair of pants today that when I first bought them, when did I buy them? Hmm. I bought them last year. I bought them last year and I could not hardly get them up over my hips. And uh, today I thought, you know, uh, I'll see if these guys work yet. And um, <laughs> I'm so excited because um, they actually not only fit, but there was room in them, zip, button, you know, and they're Donna Karen jeans. I mean, designer jeans, I love. Um, I probably have about 65 pairs of jeans. I don't, I am I am a lover of jeans. And I dislike wearing dresses. Um, back in the day when I worked in banks, um, the financial wor world and had to be a, you know, dressed up, et cetera. I could not stand it. I could, I hated putting on a dress. I hated putting on a skirt. Um, I just didn't like to be all gussied up. I just, I still don't. It's a rare occasion that I like to, um, I'm a jeans and t-shirt gal. So, so pretty exciting that these pants actually totally fit. So I was super excited. And, um, that's another thing I want to bring up is the scale. How many of you ladies, I know men don't really care. Um, how many of you like the scale? I can, I can, how many, how about this? How about this one? How many of you hate the scale? Ooh, my hand is raised up. Okay. Um, the reason that I don't like the scale, here's why. And I know there's scales out there that actually, um, sort of are accurate. So, the reason that I don't like the scale, and not to say that I don't know how much I weigh, I totally do. Um, and that is a number that will go with me to my grave. <laughs> because <laughs> I don't think it's anyone's business how much you weigh. I think it's terrible um, for the doctor to take your weight and then they take your blood pressure right after that. It's like, yeah, of course my blood pressure is going to be higher. You just weighed me. I'm a total stranger. So um, I'm goofy about that. Um, what I don't like about the scale is it doesn't factor in your fat versus water versus muscle. Um, I am very, uh, athletically built. So I have a lot of muscle, even if I don't work out much and kind of slack or whatever, I still have really a lot of, um, good muscle structure, I would say, thanks to my father. Thank you, dad. Um, so I would say that I know that there are like smart scales, I guess they're called. Um, I'm more interested in going by my clothing because I think that clothing really showcases, you know, hey, you've maybe put on a couple pounds, you know, maybe you got a little layer of fat that's kind of rolling over the, uh, you know, belt buckle there. You might want to scale back a little bit. Um, I think our clothing really showcases, you know, if you've lost weight or you've gained weight. It's a very good indicator and a very good um, measure. So what I do with my clients is um, I ask them to weigh themselves and then I also ask them to find a size of jeans or jeans are really good because they really kind of they're constricting they're not like uh, jogging pants or yoga pants you know they're 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 gonna they're gonna tell you if you've you know gained a little weight um, yoga pants and sweats are not gonna tell you anything they're gonna say go ahead and eat what you want we don't care so you want to go by your clothing and I, of course, have different sizes um, that I go by. Um, for those of you who are over 40, ladies, um, and men, but more ladies, it's, it's harder for us to lose weight. Um, I am 49 years old, 
and I will be 50 next June. Oh, that's weird to say. Um, but cause I just still don't feel my age at all. But, um, I think that when we are over a certain age, it's, uh, it's more difficult. It's not impossible. It's not impossible. You can definitely get into really good shape um, in your 40s, 50s, 60s, and up if that's what you want to do. I have a friend that's going to be 80 years old this month, and she probably weighs 100 pounds soaking wet. So she, and you know, she works at it. She really does. She's probably predominantly a small person, but she, um, she watches her diet. She exercises, she's social, she's connected to other people. And she's my buddy in Arizona and I absolutely adore her. And, um, yeah, she'll be 80 and she's, you know, super small. You know, and people say your genetics. Well, your genetics have a very small role to play in your size. Your lifestyle has the most. I can tell you when I was eating, you know, more uh, sort of carbs and maybe some goodies, uh, things of that nature, I was heavier. Um, that has nothing to do with my genetics. That has to do with, you know, me and what I put in my body. Um, poor choices, pretty much, you know, who doesn't like, uh, you know, onion rings and a burger? I mean, you know, yum. So that was how it used to be on a rare occasion. I didn't do that a lot, but you know, you just indulge and then you're older and then the week, oh, and then the perimenopause comes in and, um, I'm going to actually do a whole video on perimenopause for the ladies out there because I have so much information and I have so many friends that are over, you know, the age of, you know, 45 and they're having issues with, you know, sleep, with, uh, weight gain, with you know, all kinds of things. I mean, I don't understand why we have to, as women, you know, we carry the child, we sacrifice our bodies for the child, we deliver the child, we care for the child, and then, you know, we keep having our, you know, womanly cycle, and then, you know, let's throw this on top of it. Hey, you're going to go through perimenopause for 10 years before you actually go into menopause. That is per my doctor telling me that, and I'm just like, what? And if I could tell you all the problems I have had, you would be blown away. Like, oh my gosh, you know, and this is just part of being a woman. And I'm not saying that, you know, childbirth isn't wonderful and because it actually isn't wonderful. <laughs> um, the child is your gift and it's such a miracle to have a child and um, it's wonderful, but my personal experience when I was pregnant, um, you know, I was sick every single day. Um, I, I had morning sickness, afternoon sickness, evening sickness. Um, I had, uh, bronchitis, uh, while I was pregnant, couldn't take anything for that. I had chicken pox. Oh yes, I did. In the third trimester. That was zero fun. I'm going to tell you what, um, being covered in oatmeal and having chicken pox in your third trimester and bonus, it was snowing outside. Um, you know, so you really couldn't get out of your, my driveway is very steep. So anyway, long story short, terrible experience for me. Um, wonderful having a child, but, um, I only have one. And that might be why. So anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. I am going to do a video on perimenopause for the ladies out there. I'm definitely going to do a longer video sort of showcasing, you know, what you may be looking forward to when you're in perimenopause, or I should say not looking forward to. It's horrible. 
I, I, I mean, really, it's, it's awful. The weird stuff that happens to your body. I mean, I mean, and I talk to other ladies, um, and they've gone through the same thing or something similar. And, and also when I brought it up to my doctor, the laundry list of issues that I have had, she said, Nancy, you're not alone. And I thought, what, what kind of a sick joke is this that we have to go through as women, all of these issues just because we're women it it sucks it does it sucks i'm gonna say that so anyway look forward to my perimenopause video and um, also the other classes that i'll be having in october i'm going to get that schedule out and i hope that i will see you guys there remember this is a live video and um we just never know what's going to happen with the live videos. But one thing about it is you can look at this video at your leisure any other time. You don't have to catch it live. And so that'll be the same with the classes. So I'll bid you a wonderful Friday. Have an awesome weekend. And think about what I said on here. I hope it resonates with some of you or all of you. That would be great. You guys take care. I appreciate you being here. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're my favorites because you watched the whole video. And take care.